So what about pronunciation? Like some people say, it's so important, you know, like the pronunciation is the, the most important thing, otherwise you don't get the effect. And then, the you know, it's a very good point. It's a very, very good point. I will tell you that from what I have seen, because we have so many people that come from all over the world, so they come with very different accents, um, and nobody is really pronouncing the Sanskrit mantras the ways that the priests here are pronouncing it. And I, I would disagree that it's not, it's not that the pronunciation is um, unimportant, but I would say it's your level of love and faith in what you are doing that even trumps pronunciation because it's your connectedness to the frequency of the mantra as you're chanting it that is the most important. And what I mean by that is, you know, we will have visiting priests that come and when they chant, it just, it's flat, it's empty. You can tell that there's no connection. It's just, you know, something that they showed up because they're getting paid to do this. And as they're chanting, there's just simply no depth of vibration to it. No and then I'll see other people who will come. Um, we had a group, for example, from China that came. And, um, you know, the pronunciations of the mantras were, they weren't perfect, but my God, they were so infused mm. with love that mm. as I heard them chant, I was just, you know, I was just crying. I was moved to tears. So, again, it's not, I'm not saying that it's unimportant, but I would not say it's the most important. Our ability to connect to that universal energy that animates a mantra is through love, devotion, and faith. And and the respect for these, uh, you know, that we that we use them as the amazing beings that they are. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's exactly that. Yeah. I always because you know when when uh, we did a uh, recording with uh, the Guto monks from from Tibet, and mm. uh, we wanted to create um, a possibility for people to chant along with the Guto monks, and I, I, I function kind of as the bridge that you can understand what they chant because obviously they do it, you know, with their, you know, with their amazing voices, and and so I kind of have this Western bridge there, but I thought they were just chanting something, I thought they were chanting in Tibetan because it sounded so different, and uh, I said, yes. what language, this, this is Sanskrit, and and I always have this um, this example of benza and vajra, you know, which is in, in, in Tibetan it's benza, and Sanskrit it's vajra, mm. and it sounds so different to me, you know, like as a Western person, so I, that, that relaxed me somehow more in the pronunciation department, because I felt yes. like, like they're, they're doing it, you know, they're doing it do it right you know right yeah. well, I'll give you an analogy that my spiritual teacher had she had said to me um you know uh, this was about a year ago before I knew I was moving to India and she had used the analogy that when a physician is connected to that divine energy or that cosmic consciousness or that universal intelligence however you want to call it that the physician can even prescribe ice cream. And it's funny because I, I'm, I'm so vehemently opposed to eating ice cream. And so it's funny that ice cream keeps coming up in my spiritual <laughs> metaphors. <laughs> of course, it's vegan. Vegan and sugar-free. <laughs> yes, it's vegan and sugar-free. But, um, you know, she said that when a physician is connected, you can, you know, she can even prescribe ice cream and it will cure disease. So I think it's the same mm. that once you are connected... It's not the technical aspects of the mantra that are so important, the pronunciation. It's in your connectedness, mm -hmm. the force that you're able to summon. And then the mantra is essentially given direction, but it's even given direction just simply with your intention, your sankalpa. I think it's the less and less and less connected you are, the more important the pronunciation and the technical aspects are. Now, I think, you know, uh, a perfect marriage is, you know, perfect pronunciation and perfect connection. But I think you get to this point where the technical aspects no longer, um, they no longer ma matter. The mantras are there to help you get to that point of connection. And then once you're there, 
apparently you would treat, you know, humanity's disease with ice cream. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, or just with water, you know, like that's all. Yes, we're just with water. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And we always um, emphasize, you know, like with healing mantras that we, like you said, it's not just the healing mantra. It's it's the mantra opens the pathway for healing to happen, and then that, that healing exactly and by finding the right healing practitioner, finding the it's right exactly healing right. entity. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had an incredible story of this this guy who had Lyme disease and he was totally, absolutely desperate and he was in bed, I think, for a few years and he was just really, like, saw no way out. And then he put his mind to this healing mantra on Shri Dhanvan Trenamaha for three mm. days. And suddenly, one day, after these three days, this this book fell out of the bookshelf and opened mm. the page and told him there was a, a, an ad for, for, some, for some guy you know, like a holistic practitioner. And uh-huh. he, he took that and he went there and and he had that dream, oh, you're going to be here with Peruvian herbs. And he went to this, but he forgot about it. And he went to this guy and then at the end of the session, the guy said, so I'm going to prescribe you these Peruvian herbs. <laughs> and he couldn't believe it. And uh, and that that kind of thing, like he didn't get maybe healed just by chanting Om Shri Dhan Mantri, but the energy was allow, allowed to, to have that come towards No, him. it's exactly like, what I see also for my patients that I'll give them a mantra. Um, and oftentimes I'll do, you know, fairly, you know, basic generic mantras. Like if it's more of needing to increase the feminine or the male energy, or if it's for clearing the chakras, I have like a few that I'll typically give. And what will happen is that life events, you know, relationships, something will shift that was the block for their healing. And mm-hmm. so it's it's not just on that physical level of mm-hmm. like, oh, your liver feels better, but it's the things that were accentuating the problem begin to be removed. And even here at the hospital, um, each morning they start with doing a um, Dhanvantri homam. So they do a puja to Dhanvantri, a fire puja to Dhanvantri. They're chanting Dhanvantri mantras um, for about an hour and a half, they're chanting the mantras. And so many of the doctors here say the same thing, that we're just seeing miraculous things happen that, you know, even though somebody will have to get um, some medicine, um, a very small course of medicine will, you know, result in miraculous things Mm -hmm. happening. Or during a surgery, the surgeons will say, you know, even though they're my hands, I can feel that some other force is moving my hand so that the surgery is just being done, you know, absolutely seamlessly. So the mantras support the environment for healing. Yes. So that's that's also out loud, huh? that they would do these other, out loud, the mantras. They would chant the mantras. Yes, those are done, those are done out loud, exactly. Mm-hmm. These are done by um, the priests that are from the temple. They come to the hospital every day and they chant the mantras out loud and they resonate through the um, hallways of the hospital.